Well, good morning, channel. Welcome back. It is Saturday morning, December 30th. It is a crisp 34 degrees out here this morning. Good gracious, chilly. Uh, anyway, welcome to my best of 2023 video where I'm going to showcase some of my best shots taken this year. What a great year it's been. Some epic places to visit, some beautiful photography, and I want to take you guys along. There are chapter markers in this video uh, down below so that you can jump ahead if you'd like and skip to the parts you're interested in. I encourage you to watch the whole video, however. There's some pretty cool uh, stuff throughout. 23 has been a great year for me and for my channel. You know, I, you know, it's a mixture of photography and uh, motorcycle content. Really, the motorcycle content has lifted the channel and moved it forward. But the photography, too, from the comments I get on the videos I put out that are primarily photography, just a lot of folks... Uh, encouraged by them and uh, that's just great. My channel's grown from, you know, at the beginning of 2023, I had about 100 subscribers, tiny uh, little thing that I decided to do sometime in 2022, to now over 1,300 subscribers. And while that's still small, you know, everything's relative compared to a lot of the other uh, YouTubers out there, you guys know this is not my source of income. This is what I do for fun and to bring you guys some entertaining and educational videos and bring some beauty uh, for you guys. So, you know, 1300 is quite a feat and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you 1300 folks. It's just so encouraging and so touching and I'm so honored to be able to bring you guys content uh, you know week after week so you know my photography journey you guys have heard before uh, I've never been to a, I, I don't have a photography degree I've never had a college course in photojournalism or anything like that I've been shooting uh, photos from gosh back in the film days with my Minolta X700 for decades now and most recently I want to say in the last decade I've been taught primarily by the amazing people on YouTube who are so good at this professional folks just sharing their heart and their expertise uh, to help move me along and I'm trying to pass some of that along to you guys too just in, to return the favor uh, there's such good information out there free of charge and while I might not be technically perfect, it has certainly advanced my photography. And I hope to help you do the same. Guys, make sure you're watching this video in high definition in 4K. You go down to the bottom, I'll show you here on the screen. Go down to the bottom and click that, I, that little uh, gear and uh, where it says um, resolution or or, or, or well, size or whatever, but click it and make sure and choose the option high definition or 4K, okay? It'll make these photos look much better on your screen and you'll be able to see the details that I'm talking about. All right, guys, this first one, we I started the year, I think, pretty much January 1st, if not December 30th of last year. Bought myself a brand new motorcycle, which has kick-started the motorcycle aspect of my photography uh, YouTube channel here. Um, you can see here it it's a ardent red Honda Goldwing DCT version, which means it doesn't have a clutch. It just it shifts itself like an automatic car. It's been an incredible bike. I am in love with it. Um, so we're going to start this photographic journey this morning with this photo of me and my bike on the day I picked it up from the dealership. The sun's coming up, guys, it's in my face. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try not to squint, but we'll just keep going here.
All right, this second shot, the moon. <laughs> like moths to a flame, every time there's a clear sky and a beautiful moon coming out, it's all I can do not to get my tripod out and go take a photo of the moon. In February of 2023, I took this shot. It was a full moon or just very almost a full moon kind of evening. Uh, threw my logo up in there, my watermark in there, just sort of as an advertisement piece. Beautiful shot. I love this because the light is just touching the sides of the moon, which highlight the craters and give this shot some depth. But also the dark areas and the light spots, and then that one giant crater that looks like something hit the moon pretty hard. I'm just fascinated by astrophotography, and this is one of my better moon shots of the year. Ah, yes. Now we move on to the Faroe Islands. You guys know, you've seen the videos. I spent a week in early March in the Faroe Islands with Mass Peter Iverson at the lead. Was an amazing trip. I have been dreaming of going to see the Faroe Islands for so long and just made it a reality in March of 2023. An epic trip. So we're going to start with this photo. It was the day we arrived in this very iconic spot with this leading line road that sort of twists through the frame here. The beautiful brown, like early, early spring grasses here uh, with the epic island in the center there and the U-shape of the mountains um, just really frames this photo up well. The sun's just coming up over there on the right or just going down. I think it's just going down because I got there yeah, in the late afternoon. Anyway, love this place. It was the first opportunity to get my camera out and shoot in the Faroe Islands. I was so excited, so excited. All right, the same shot. 12 hours later, the next morning, it had snowed overnight. The very same shot, same leading line road. You can barely see the uh, island back there, um, but just uh, all the same composition. Love this photo, stark difference from the day before when it was all brown grasses. The wind was blowing pretty mightily this morning and um, you can, if you go back and watch the videos of this day, you can see the wind blowing the snow across the road here. Love this shot. Later that day, we went to Trelanipa. Now Trelanipa is uh, a place that has a floating lake and and this cliff here, which is an amazing, I, I, you know, huge high cliff, the depth, the, the grand scheme of this whole photo is hard, hard to see in the photo itself, but it's so far down <laughs> to the ocean down there. And the waves were just hitting up and on that center stack of, of cliff there. And it just seemed like it was in slow motion. It was so grand to see. Tried to capture it with uh, my lens here. Didn't want to get any closer to this ledge because it's all soft snow and literally the drop off is straight down to the ocean after that ledge. Incredible place, just amazing. Sun coming up there in the background. This I want to say was mid morning, but this whole location just provided some amazing photography. All right, on this shot, I am now on the other side. I am standing on that giant cliff you just saw and I'm looking over the edge, and boy, did I learn I have a fear of heights on this trip. I got to this edge, and it was all I could do, and the other guys didn't seem to have a problem with it. It was all I could do to get this close. I really wish I'd had a long pole. I could stick my camera out over this cliff edge and get a better shot of this, but this was as close to the edge as I could get, and guys, I'm holding my camera out as far as my arms would stretch. But would you look at this scene, cliffs going straight down to the ocean, just sheer drop-offs. If you lose your camera or lose your footing, you're never getting it back here. Oh my gosh. Now I'm stepping back a little bit, increasing my field of view here to include the famous floating lake, Trelanipa. Just geographically, the way this is set up, it makes this lake look like it's floating. It's high above the ocean. It's a freshwater lake, the largest lake in the Faroe Islands, and it sits above 
these cliffs and above the ocean in this manner and to the left of, fr of the frame it spills off into the ocean over on that side and we're going to get to a shot there because it's pretty fantastic too but just take a moment and and blow this up full screen and look at the just the enormity of this focus in on the cliff edges there and the ocean down below pan around this scene and scene and take a look all right moving on man it's bright out here okay still at trail anipa this next shot shows you where the lake is spilling off into the ocean i love this shot we had to crawl out on some slippery snow-covered rocks uh, there's a little part that juts out here that gives you this vantage point of sort of looking back on the cliff face. And you can see there in the bottom right corner of the frame how the lake Trail of Nipa spills off into that waterfall. You can see the waterfall mesmerizing to just watch it pour into the ocean. But these cliffs, look at the sea stack in the middle of the frame here that is separated from the island and just sort of stands alone out there. I wish we could have got to the top of that ridge on the island and photographed straight down on these sea stacks, but we just didn't have the time or it was too icy to get there. I'm, I've seen shots from that location. We didn't get out there, but this is just amazing. The cliffs seem to go on forever, and it was a beautiful day. The clouds add some character to the sky, and the sea, of course, is the sea. Just amazing to, to, to look at. I could stare at this photo all day, one of my best. All right, after Trail Anipa, we went to this place called Gasa de Lourdes, and it's this small little village you can see at the top of this shot, perched on this cliff with this never-ending waterfall. Great place for some drone shots, but my God, the wind was so strong, it was knocking us off our feet. I was having to hold on to light poles to take this picture. It would calm down at times, which you can see the waterfall's pretty straight down. The wind would just die down to nothing, but then it would come back up and literally be blowing us almost off our feet. I've never felt straight line winds as strong as this place right here, but it was beautiful. I mean, if you could have flown your drone, it would have been much, much more beautiful. And there's so many vantage points. There's this vantage point, which is on this little tiny road to get out here. And then there's a set of stairs that you climb down to get almost to the ocean floor where you can take another vantage point up at that waterfall. Incredible place. We didn't go down there. The wind was too, too strong and it was covered in ice and snow. So we couldn't, we couldn't risk going down that, that stairwell uh, to get to, to the other location. But this location was epic and beautiful. I mean, these cliffs, this waterfall, uh, you can see in the middle of the frame when the wind would kick up, it would blow the water on the side of the cliff there. So you've got a bunch of ice sort of accumulating on the left-hand side of that waterfall. And then this picturesque little village just sitting on top of all of this with a mountain behind it. Stunning place. It was at the end of the day. We were all tired, but I was just, I couldn't take enough photos, and I got several of this particular location this is one of the best the sun popped out for just a second adding a little bit of warmth on the cliff face there and it's my favorite shot of this location gasa de lure all right the next day we went to vidoy and this town vidoridi and i'm butchering that name i'm sorry a little town up here in the on the left hand half of this photo we parked our van down there. You can see that little road and sort of a trail of houses leading up towards us. That last house down there, there's a parking lot near there. We parked the van there and walked up to this vantage point. Unbelievable scenery at this vantage point. Difficult because of the snow to get there, to get through this trench you saw, which I'm using here as sort of a leading line to bring you into the photo here uh, you can see our footsteps on the left hand side of the photo where we came from our first uh, it was one of our first hikes uh, that we took on the trip and it was 
uh, long and, and difficult to get through the snow, but the reward was fantastic. Moody day, we had storms that would, they were interesting, they would move in real quick and leave real quick. Like a massive snowstorm. There'd be moments where just hunker down letting it snow, and then 10, 15 minutes later, it would clear out and look like this, and we could get some shots. Look at the church way down in the very center of the screen down there uh, and the courtyard around that church, which looks like maybe it might be a graveyard. Um, just the scale of this photo, the tiny little houses, that massive mountain back there and the ocean just coming in through this, uh, the edge of this uh, island. One of my favorite shots of the trip. Still at the same place, panning right from the last photo that you saw this is what we saw, and this is a great example of what I was talking about, about the snowstorms coming in. Uh, Mass, our guide, standing out there on, the, on a rock that I wouldn't even get close to. Oh my gosh, the guy was fearless, just hopped right out there like a jackal and stood on that, stood on that uh, rock and posed for us to give us some scale for this photo. Um, just beautiful light as these clouds and storms would pass, come through. It would shine different light rays down in on these islands and this just one of my favorite shots. Just so rugged and and I, I can't believe I'm here taking this photo. Just wow. You know, I'm here. I'm talking to you right now in the comfort of my back porch. I go from something like this to something like that. Uh, wow, just unbelievable that I was there. All right, the next day, Kelsoy and the lighthouse. Now, we got to this. This is a great video for you guys to watch this day, this particular day. I was so looking forward to getting to this lighthouse. Unbelievable views. The trip there was by car, and then we took a ferry boat to, the island, to this island, and then we took the car again, uh, to a to a parking lot kind of place and we hiked the rest of the way. Now while this hike started out very steep, um, we had crampons on our on our boots, the little spiky things, so it helped us get gripped in the snow. And so there was a short first part of it that was very steep to get up. After that it was just sort of a gradual incline and flat and wide and just vista views the whole walk until you got to the lighthouse. But once at the lighthouse, with my long 100 to 500 telephoto lens, I was able to get shots like this. You'll see this shot again in black and white in just a minute that is my best shot of the trip. But look at the sea stacks back there, the tiny little sea stacks that are actually building sized, uh, but they look so tiny and the water was just splashing up on the cliff side here it looked like it was in slow motion. It was so far away and it was so huge that it just made it look like it was slow motion. Particularly love the moodiness of this photo and the layers from dark to light. You can see the individual islands as they just fade into the mist back there. Each one larger than the one before. Uh, wow, this, this, this sight. I had seen it many times on YouTube but on this day, I was here with my lens taking this shot. Gives me goosebumps right now just thinking about it. All right, moving on. From the lighthouse, looking the other direction. Away from that island that you just saw before, 180 degrees, the other direction. You see these other islands just lit by the sun, powdered with snow so that they pop and show up. I mean, if it hadn't snowed, you'd see some nice, like, dark islands back there, but you wouldn't see these ridge patterns that you're seeing here. So the snow added so much. It made it a little more difficult to get to places, but added so much. I love this shot. Okay, back flipping the other way, this time zoomed in and cropped with my 500 millimeter lens as close as I could get to that tiny end of the island you saw a minute ago with these sea stacks. And this really highlights the chaotic nature of the waves crashing on the cliff base there. Uh, clearly a waterfall on this first island. 
you know, coming off that little crevice there, creating ice down the face of the, of the cliff, and then the second island, and then the third island, as if it's Godzilla coming out of the mist back there, just unbelievable. My favorite and probably best shot of the whole Pharaoh's trip, this one right here. Okay, the next shot, another day, from one famous lighthouse to now Drangoneer. When I first started watching videos about the Faroe Islands, Drangoneer popped out every time. This sea stack here on the left-hand side with a hole in the middle of it, which is massive. I, I can't tell you how big this thing is. It just doesn't do it justice. And this island behind it, you know, I mentioned Godzilla a minute ago. It looks like Godzilla was like sort of sleeping in the water there. This giant island behind it. And yet another moody day where storms came in and left. And, you know, in this day I wanted to get very close to, I wanted to get right up there on that ridge in front of that sea stack with a hole in it, Drangoneer. I wanted to get right there on that snowy ridge. And a boat tried to take us to the... Uh, the water's edge down there by that, but it was too chaotic and we couldn't get out because there's no pier, you're just stepping out on rocks. It was too chaotic uh, with the waves and stuff, so we couldn't get out. So we had to come back a ways, get out of a boat, in, get out of the boat in a protected area, and then hike up to this vantage point. Um, from this vantage point on around to get to where that is was way too steep and scary for me. Uh, I'm just a big chicken and gosh, I wish I wasn't, but I was. So I stayed there while two or three guys went on uh, and ultimately made it to that, uh, that place right there on the left. And they got some epic photos, but these are the best photos I could get from the vantage point that I was willing to, to stop at here of Drangoneer, uh, a place I was looking forward to so, so much. You'll see another photo of this particular shot, uh, much more moody because the, <laughs> the storms were flying in and flying out again on this day. We got back in that boat, it was dark. Finally, the three or two or three guys that had gone out to that edge made their way back and we all were able to coordinate getting back in the boat, but it was by that time evening had come and it was dark and snowy and cold and boy, what an adventure this day was. And then the last photo of Drangoneer here uh, a panoramic, I took I think a couple of shots here and stitched them together, um, but it is not modified in Photoshop for colors or anything. These were the real colors I was seeing. The just the storm coming in there on the right, just taking over the sun, which was still shining some warmth on the left here, but it was about to go away. <laughs> Love this shot, so moody and so exactly what I experienced at this place and at this time. Okay, still in the Faroe Islands. We're at a location called Funninger. Now, Funninger was interesting. We, we parked on the right-hand side of this photo, way down at the base. There was a little pu pullout from the road that we parked in. And the hike to get up to this vantage point was straight up, straight up, and so, and slippery, so we couldn't walk straight. We had to sort of zigzag our way all the way up to the top of this mountain, and the winds at the top, blowing snow, uh, the snow here in the center of the frame, you can see the cliff that was below us. You could walk down to that edge of that cliff, and the winds would come through and just kick up us like a snow tornado that would just spin around and uh, just a couple times just envelop somebody that's standing there on the ledge, just circle tornado. It was unbelievable just what it looked like. It looked like it could just pick the person up and take off with them. Um, I wasn't brave enough to go down there and stand. I stayed where I am in this location and this is a panoramic shot too where uh, I took three or four photos from left to right and stitched them all together. I particularly like how the sun is just highlighting certain spots in this photo, but the grand scheme of everything, the enormity of this scene, 
to take it all in, you know, your eyes can take it in so quickly. So being there was quite the experience. I tried to portray that in a photo, and it's difficult to do. But just look at this. This zigzag fjord going back up into the scene there as a leading line for the photo. But boy, this one might end up on a canvas or a metal print and, and, and be hung in my house at some point. This one I really love as a landscape shot. All right, getting down to the end of the Faroe Islands, this was a place called Saxon, known, you've probably heard if you know anything about the Faroe Islands, uh, grass roofs. There's grass on the roofs. Now, I've heard people say that, you know, during the war they, they, they made these grass roofs so they'd be invisible to any enemy planes. I've also heard that the grass, grass roofs are a great insulator, and that's why they do it. So I'm not sure what the real story is, but I can tell you the grass was real a layer of dirt and grass on all these roofs. And in this photo, just a very moody scene as a storm was coming in from the backside, uh, snow covering this beautiful little church on the left-hand side that Mass said at one time was on another island. And they disassembled it brick by brick and brought it to this location and rebuilt it here in this location. What a feat that must have been, because just driving from, getting from one island to the other, in, by a car was uh, difficult. All right, moving on to uh, one of Saxon's residents here. Uh, I call this guy the happy goat because he looks like he's smiling. Black eyes, thick, uh, you know, fur coat there just to keep him warm. Uh, I don't know how he stays warm. Don't know how his feet stayed warm. <laughs> I know how mine were staying warm, but uh, but this guy's just trotting along, seemed very happy, and didn't wasn't bothered by us at all, so I snapped this photo. One of my favorites. Okay, so many, so many of my favorite shots were from the Faroe Islands. Uh, obviously, it was an epic location and place to go. A lot of fun there. But uh, now moving on back domestically here uh, in, uh, around Dallas in the in, in Texas area in April. Um, I was riding the motorcycle out to this one location and I saw this barn and uh, I'll be honest with you, I had the wrong lens here. I had a telephoto lens uh, when I really needed a wide angle. So what I did was I took two photos of this barn, uh, left and right half if you will, and stitched them together in Photoshop so that you could get this wide, wide angle view. I am enthused by old abandoned houses and farms that you know had a story once in their life, an amazing story, and I just love trying to capture these things. In this case, took out, you know, a lot of the color except for the colors in the barn because the barn is the focus of uh, this photo, and I just, I love this barn. It's just one of my favorite photos of the year. I think on that same motorcycle trip on the way to the barn, I saw this beautiful yellow field of flowers accompanied by this uh, John Deere tractor, <laughs> which if you know anything about John Deere, their colors are green and yellow, and then the yellow in the tractor wheels just match the color in the flowers that I saw in this field. And I thought this was a beautiful little photo, so I pulled the bike over and, and snapped this shot. One of my favorites, spring here in Texas. Again, here, uh, same time period. I don't know if it's the same day, it might be. More yellow flowers. Um, in this case, a, a ranch near my house called Brinkman Ranch. Just snapped this shot, put Good Morning from Texas uh, at the top of it and posted it on social media at the time. This was taken mid-April. Just love this, beautiful flowers and the lone cow out there, bull, just hanging out. The tree sort of as the centerpiece here. Okay, a little later, this was May, but the same ranch near my house, known for its longhorns. This guy walked up to check me out, see what I was doing. I think he was into photography and wanted his picture taken, um, so that's what I did. Amongst these dainty little flowers, it's sort of a contrast. We got this strong strong bull and then this, these dainty little flowers that he's walking through. Um, great shot of Ferdinand here. 
All right, moving into June of 2023, I was out on a local lake testing out the eye detect focus on my Canon R5 and focused in on this uh, great gray heron or blue heron, uh, one of the two, that came flying by me and just w had the shutter on high speed. Sorry, I think somebody's mowing a, mowing a yard. Well, that's great. Three hours later. Good grief, what could they be mowing? It is the last few days of December. Nothing but brown grass for two months. I think they're just picking up leaves or whatever. So, sorry for that interruption, guys. So back on topic, this uh, heron that was flying by and I was using the camera's eye detect focus to zoom in as I panned with this bird on the eye of the bird, it was focusing on the eye and did such a good job, really love this shot. Bird was coming in for a landing, spread its wings, beautiful light on it. One of my favorite shots here at a local park same local park. I just love this little bird in the reeds here, a bunch of cattails at the side of this pond. And I saw this little bird just kind of in and amongst these reeds and uh, using the eye detect, focus, it focused right in on its eye and passed all of these reeds. Did a great job, beautiful little bird. Uh, one of my, I made a square crop here, just I think it suits the scene. Um, one of my favorite shots there. All right, back to Colorado in July. Took a trip there in July, testing out our new Bronco. Anyway, it happened to be a full moon uh, that week we were there. So uh, I set up my tripod on the deck of my house out there and just waited for the moon to rise up over the mountainside. And the mountainside was so far off, I'm really zoomed in here with my 100 to 500 which makes the moon look large against those trees because it's so far off, compresses the scene. And I just love the silhouette of the, of the pine trees as the moon creeped up over this mountain ridge in southwestern Colorado. One of my favorite shots. This got a lot of likes on social media. Love this shot. Same trip, same place, southwestern Colorado. This is a lake called Crystal Lake. It's off Highway 550. Uh, in southwest Colorado there on Red Mountain Pass. And you can tell why they call it Red Mountain Pass. That mountain in the back is red. And it's red because of all the iron ore in it. It's basically a rusted mountain. But there's a lot of iron ore in the area and it just the iron ore rust and turns the soil red. Uh, so Red Mountain here. And Crystal Lake aptly named just early in the morning. It is so calm and clear and just still and beautiful, can really just at peace uh, in the mornings at this place. Uh, I've come here a lot during the, f during the fall. You've seen some of my fall shots when those evergreens, uh, are the, the, uh, sorry, the aspens on the right and the aspens on the left have turned bright yellow. Um, but this was during the summer in July when everything's green, just a beautiful shot. Love the symmetry of this photo, top and bottom. Also, same trip, a waterfall that I have photoed from, uh, that I have shot for many, many years, Twin Falls, up in Yankee Boy Basin, uh, Colorado. They call this Twin Falls not because there's two falls left and right, but there's two falls top and bottom, if you look closely in this photo. Way up there uh, on the uh, ridge of the mountain, there's, there's a small pair of waterfalls, and then here closer in the foreground, there's another sort of pair of waterfalls, Twin Falls. Love this location right up at Treeline uh, in Colorado. Same location. No, sorry, this is back at Crystal Lake. Looking across the lake up on the ridge with zoomed in with my 500 all the way to 500. I thought I saw something moving way over there with my naked eye. And so I got my lens out and, and this is what I was seeing moving over there. A herd of elk, beautiful herd of elk, just out for its morning breakfast. 
uh, way across the way here at Crystal Lake. The, the lens did such a good job here of bringing them to life and bringing it up close because I can't tell you how far away this was. And this is fully zoomed in at uh, 500 millimeters. Okay, same place, southwestern Colorado, Red Mountain Pass. They call it the Million Dollar Highway. It, no guardrails, very dangerous if you're not paying attention. I have driven it for 40 years and know it like the back of my hand now. So it doesn't bother me at all, but there are some folks that just will not ride on this road. It freaks them out. But here I, I uh, got out of the car and walked a ways and took a shot back where I could get a vantage point of the road and the sheer cliffs that drop off from the side of the road. Also happened to get a couple of Broncos here in this photo. And uh, when I posted it on social media back over the summer, uh, that's a Bronco club. And they recognized themselves and got in touch with me. And that's been all kinds of fun because we own a Bronco. But it's a Colorado Bronco club. And they were so thrilled and appreciative that I had captured this photo of them, just epic shot of them. Uh, and they, uh, their members were very happy about that. And I was able to share these photos with most of their members. Same trip, Colorado. This is called, this is Weber Ranch, and this guy, Weber, I think is his last name, decided he wanted to put up this massive American flag in the center of one of his pastures, and it's so picturesque with this mountainous background. That's Mount Sneffels, the Sneffels Range back there. Um, anyway, just the wind was blowing just right, bringing this massive flag out so that you can see it beautiful green pasture. I've taken this in the fall too with fall colors and more snow on those mountainsides. Um, I love this shot. You know, there are people that are torn. Some, some people don't like the fact that he put up this flag just because it interferes with the nature, uh, basically, is their, their complaint. I think it adds so much. I really, really love this photo and what a great uh, thing he did and patriotic thing. And he has a little donation box just about where I'm standing to take this picture where you can throw a couple dollars in just to donate because maintaining this flag and replacing it periodically is very expensive. Same trip in the evening. Went looking for deer. Uh, and there's a place called Log Hill. It's a housing addition, very exclusive housing addition up on a mountain ridge. And the deer love to come just walk around up there. So took my lens out and we drove around up there until we saw a few and, and took the shot. I love this little deer. The setting sun just kind of adds to the color of the photo and the yellow sort of flowers around it just really make this photo. And I think he's looking at me, to be honest with you. He's watching me very close. He does not want me to get any closer. Um, beautiful little deer here. Love this shot. Okay, back on Highway 550, switchbacks, my friends. If you've never heard of switchbacks, that's what a switchback looks like. Um, it's an area that is so steep that they have to switch the road back and forth just to get down it. So this is on Highway 550, obviously taken from my drone um, above. I love this shot. You want to talk about a leading line through the entire frame, you follow this road. I posted on social media and, you know, one guy said, well, could you, could you have get, got rid of that car there? That kind of detracts from it. Actually, I like the car. The car gives it scale, lets you understand the, the size of the scene. All right, now we move on to August. Local lake out here in the North Dallas area. Uh, just took my bike out for a morning ride and my camera and uh, got to a point where I could get out and walk around. And I think I have my 100 to 500 on here, and I'm zoomed probably 400 millimeters across the way. I saw this little white dot, and I'm like, I bet that's a bird. Got out the long lens and zoomed in. Sure enough, this white crane, beautiful white crane with its reflection in the water there. This dead tree in the background just walking along looking for its breakfast. Love this shot. A local lake here in the North Dallas area. And now a little macro photography. Uh, it's not true macro, but it, you can do a macro-ish kind of photography with either my 100 to 500 lens, or I believe this was probably my 24 to 105 lens, uh, and it's cropped somewhat. But 
here in August, this bee was obviously searching for pollen, and you can see it's completely covered with pollen. Just a beautiful shot. Love this flower. Love that the bee is the same color, just sort of doing its thing, and the intricate patterns you see in the center of the flower, and the tiny little hairs of pollen that you can see on the bee. This is, this is one of my favorite close-up shots, bringing beauty to you that is not often seen. Okay, jumping into October. Uh, this was a sunrise one morning over two massive flags heading towards a lake here in North Texas, and you'll see some shots from that lake soon. Just really beautiful shot here. Okay, that same morning in October, heading towards a local lake to get some sunrise photos, I captured this crane sitting on this dead branch. This particular part of this lake is filled with a bunch of half-submerged dead trees and this crane was just sitting up there minding its own business. I waited for 45 minutes. I wanted this crane to fly off so I could get some in-flight pictures of sort of silhouette of this this crane. He wasn't having it. He was staying right where he was. He was comfortable and just stayed there. So this is a shot of him on one of the dead trees with the morning sun glow on the water behind him. Really love this shot. The intricate tiny little hairs feathers, if you will, uh, underneath his neck there. Beautiful bird. Okay, here we go. A panorama of that same scene, that same lake. The sun is coming up. A dead tree over to my left just kind of gives you a, a launching point where your eye follows into the scene across this horizon. This is a panoramic of probably four shots stitched together. Beautiful, quiet, serene morning love this shot the colors the water the dead trees everything about it love this shot same morning 500 millimeter lens zoomed all the way to 500 across the way looking at these dead trees sort of poking out of the water with the mist on the water uh, looks very sort of movie-ish like you don't know what kind of creature is going to come out anytime now <laughs> really love this shot Okay, later in October, uh, going for a nature walk, happen to see uh, these red, I call them Christmas berries, but I'm sure that's not just a word I heard, I don't know. But they are tangled amongst this barbed wire. So you got the, sharp, sh the stark, man-made, sharp barbed wire with this beautiful, delicate, natural little vine twisting along it and these berries just popping out. Oh, there's more... Of there's more to contrast than just differences between light and dark. Here, it's a contrast between man and nature and sharp and delicate. Love this shot. Late November, fall has come. I'm in search of fall colors. I'm at a local woodland. I know you guys have seen the videos of me walking through uh, Arbor Hills Nature Preserve here in North Dallas area. And there's a little pond in the middle of the reserve it's just quiet, and from time to time you can see some birds or cranes. Uh, on this day there were no birds, but there was this perfect symmetry reflection of this dead tree and this overhanging willow tree on the left, uh, and then sort of a just a picturesque, almost Thomas Kincaid-like look to this photo. Um, really, this, this photo moves me. I, uh, I really enjoy this photo stare at it for a while okay still late November you know it's hard to find waterfalls here in North Texas there's just not that many but I googled a few and there is one you know call it 20 miles from me so I hopped in the car and 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 found it climbed down to a certain vantage point and while this is man-made stops up you know dams up a creek on the back side of that but then falls over here uh, I was able to take some long exposure. It's one of my first attempts at long exposure photography with the water sort of blurred out here, and this turned out beautiful. I love this shot with the water and the little swirls in the in the pond below where the water's sort of flowing around in a circle. Really, really like this photo. All right, now into December. Uh, you guys have seen this video recently. I went on a nature walk, uh, granite Cory Park, another local sort of nature walk, if you will, not far from my house. 
late in fall. Most of the leaves had already fallen, but I was just going to walk around with my camera and see what I could find. And then I stumbled across these beautiful blueberries, morning dew still on them with the dark green background, it, just beautiful colors here. Uh, crispness of the berries, really love this shot. Same walk, same morning, I came across this tree trunk that had some moss lichen growing on the side of it and the sun was just coming up and it was highlighting the edge of that moss and it was so sharp and clear and beautiful uh, with the green that I just had to capture this, this photo and I really like this photo. You zoom in on this photo, it's incredible what you can see. All right, guys, and that brings us to the last shot of my favorites of 2023, the same nature walk at Granite Quarry Park. Just the last shot as I'm walking back towards the parking lot, this walkway here, this cement sidewalk, if you will, in and amongst these trees with the fall colors and most of the leaves on the ground, like I said, was just a beautiful, backlit, colorful fall shot for me really love this shot all right guys that's going to do it for my uh, fall about my best of 2023 photography i hope you've enjoyed this little run through my year uh, from a photography standpoint i've got big plans in 2024 i'm uh, going to go to another epic location that i'll fill you in later going to join my friend mass peter iverson uh, there and uh, look forward to that. It'll be late in 2024. But we're likely going to go back to Colorado, and then I'll have still plenty of shots from uh, just taking short trips locally here. But thank you for joining me. I appreciate, as I said, every single one of you. If you're into motorcycle content, tune in soon for my one-year review of that Honda Goldwing. Otherwise, guys, thank you, and I'll see you again. God bless.